Hello and welcome to Folio Weekly Magazine. I'm Rob Nicholson. Today, it is my pleasure to welcome an old friend, really, uh, to the show and uh, to bring you new information. Emily Saliers from Indigo Girls, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here. Hey, Rob. It's good to be reunited. It really is. You know, I've been thinking ever since we, you have heard that you got, you know, were coming to do this show uh, with the symphony and, and just about our lives. We were both in Atlanta in the mid 80s. Um, I actually grew up here in Jacksonville, but that's where I went to college at Georgia State. And y'all were right around the corner uh, at uh, Emory University. Can you talk about the, the the collaboration that you and Amy Ray have had all these years? Y'all have had monster success. And I want to say that even Rolling Stone uh, called you the ideal duet partners. Can you talk about that partnership? Well, we met in elementary school. We had, we went to the same high school and we, we joined the chorus in high school. And that's when we became really, really close. We had a common AP English teacher and Ellis Lloyd, and he really encouraged us when he knew we were getting together and learning some songs. So she played guitar and I played guitar. We both wrote songs. And so we had that sort of mentorship and encouragement very early on. And then I started college at Tulane and Amy started at Vanderbilt. We ended up transferring to Emory without even telling the other one. We just did that. So our lives have been really, really aligned. But you were talking about the 80s. Like that was a really rich time for us because like the sort of late 80s, we were just a bar band. But we were back at that time, you know, with college radio, you could build your own tours. We did everything. We called program directors. We we made our cassettes and we made an EP and we made a single um, in the mid to later 80s. And so it really was um, do it yourself. And we we just, nothing ever felt like playing dudes. And growing up in the 80s, like in Atlanta, Little Five Points Pub, I just actually drove by there today. It's not Little Five Points Pub anymore, but I just got this like rush of memories. So we had a very nurturing and fertile environment in Atlanta and, you know, great group of musicians and friends and the same thing with Athens, Georgia, our sister city, uh, musically. And so that's what happened. We were just steeped in music. We, we found each other in high school. We made a career without even realizing we were making a career. And then we got signed to a major in 1988. I guess we got signed. The album came out in 89. And since then it's just been decades of working together, trying to grow and to be good activists and to learn and all that stuff. You know, I, that, that I would never trade that time in Atlanta uh, for the world. It was, it was one of the best experiences that I, that I ever had. You're, yeah. you're out now on uh, your 16th studio record, Long Look. And look, um, look long, well, yeah. look, I'm sorry, Look Long. <laughs> you already corrected me on that. Um, talk about, about what Jess, I'm speaking to is, it, it kind of you kind of are going back to that time a little bit in the writing of that record well it's people have said that and it's hard to analyze your own work sometimes i know that that album is very um very real very immediate um there are some songs that are like super super acoustic in their treatment it sort of harken back i guess to our early days but again for me and amy we're just writing about the experiences that we're having um so she's got a song called Kansas City Girl. It's about her, you know, taking an Uber driver who's a lot younger than she is. There's a lot about like where we are in terms of our age and point in life on this album that is not obviously what was going on in the earlier records. But the other thing is that we worked with John Reynolds. He produced it. He, um, we met him through Sinead O'Connor when she was on Lilith Fair. And then we kind of like poached her band and John. <laughs> And because he produced her records, he was married to Sinead for a while and we all became friends. And then John um, produced our album, Come On Now Social. I think it's been 20 years ago or something like that. And then we remained friends and we were just in the UK touring. We had a cup of tea with him and said, let's just make an album together, together again. That's how we ended up in the UK. That We ended up with John. That's how we ended up at Peter Gabriel's studio, Real World, near Bath, um, just back with our Brits and in a beautiful, beautiful environment where we all stayed in the same complex. We ate our meals together, you know, just very communal, lots of love and affection, and great musicians. Uh, so in that sense, I think we were really relaxed about the company we were with and the studio where we were. And it probably just gives it a flavor to the album that's kind of like a hard to articulate. 
That, that really must have been an incredible experience to be at Peter Gabriel's studios there. And, and like you say, in a compound setting, going to the show that you're going to be doing here, uh, it's coming up on Friday, April 21st. It's with the Jacksonville Symphony Orchestra. How do you how do you take a notorious folk duo and create a show with a symphony orchestra? What is that process like? Well, what happened was we, you know, I knew that there were artists who did things like with symphonies or small orchestras like, you know, Nancy Griffith and the Blue Moon Orchestra and things that Lyle Lovett did and, and other artists who played with, you know, symphonic instruments. So we knew that that could be done, but there was an agency that was putting together um, artists and symphonies. And I think that symphonies have made a lot of effort to reach out to either a younger or a new demographic. Um, as it's been a struggle for them to maintain their uh, attendance numbers and they've just branched out. And so we luckily were part of the timing of that. And we got asked, would we like to be one of those bands who would get these great arrangers to write arrangements of the songs? And so we found these two guys and, uh, but now we work with Sean McLaughlin um, almost exclusively. And he just, he knows our music, he gets it. And he's an incredible arranger gifted musician so he just takes the songs and some of them we suggest some of them he suggests and then he just goes to work and we have conversations with him along the way how would we like to approach it but a lot of it is him just being like his creative self he's just a collaborator and that's how it happens and then when you get to the symphonies we have one rehearsal during the day of the show and it's typically a different conductor in every city some repeats and then uh, you play the show that night and there's no drums, there's no meter, you know, you have like the latency of the percussion and it's this big, big thing, amorphous sound, but it's incredibly exciting for me and Amy. We always feel humbled by it. We always look forward to it. And we, we work hard on those shows harder because you have to just like keep it together and like listen to all these things happening at once. It's, it's very challenging and very rewarding. And by the way, we both love Jacksonville. It's going to be great to be back in Jacksonville. I love that city. Well, you know, I actually, I saw you, the last time you were here, you were at the Ponte Vedra Music Hall, and yeah. Jacksonville loves you <laughs> very much. We're looking very forward to having you back. I know, it's you, tough. It's tough to be in Florida sometimes. And, uh, <laughs> and Jacksonville's just, they got, got it going on. We're really looking forward to coming back. That's awesome. The, 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 the show with the symphony is actually also, in our profits from that show at the theater is donating to Jasmine Jacksonville. Um, and they are an organization that helps uh, LGBTQIA uh, youth ages 13 to 21, helps them adjust. How important is that? Do you think that is? I mean, you can't, it's hard to say that there's a time now that's much more important than it ever has been, but that's what it feels like to me because in the wake of this legislation, it's like just a barrage of anti-trans legislation across the country that are preventing youth from getting gender affirming health care. And for the trans community, it's particularly painful. And for those parents of the trans kids and for their allies, just it's just I don't think that we can imagine what it's like to have legislators say there's something wrong with you. You're going to make a decision. It's not true what you are as a person. It's just a complete denigration of their humanity and it's very very painful and and you know trans member trans people are members of the queer community and for all of us who are queer and our allies more than ever we need to support each other show each other love support our humanity and so places like jasmine it's a, a place where queer youth can go and be supported to be recognized for their value as human beings and it, I just can't overstate the importance of groups like Jasmine, particularly now in this country. Going back to the music, uh, you and Amy have had your own solo projects. Uh, you've collaborated on a movie. Um, uh, I understand you're also working on a musical or two. What, what, what's, what's Emily up to now? <laughs> Well, I'm up to, I am, I'm writing music for musicals. I'm working on two different teams and I've got one pending. Um, it just, it came out of nowhere and really during the pandemic when we weren't touring at all. And there were a couple different uh, teams working on creative things. And I'm really new to the world of musical theater now, complete convert and completely obsessed. 
And one of the musicals I'm working on right now is tentatively named Starstruck. And we've had, we've been in a lot of workshops and I would say we're in very, very fast paced uh, development right now. And we're going to have a reading in New York soon. And so that's very exciting. But the other one I'm working on is called Country Radio, the story of a queer youth growing up in Georgia. Uh, and that story has been also well received by other like uh, directors of theaters and so on. So it's very, very exciting and challenging work. I've never really had to form my thoughts to include other writers' thoughts, unless we're doing like a co-write of a song together. So, but if you're saying like, this is happening in the script and we need a song that's about this, it's a particularly new challenge for me. And I'm just finding it, I'm, com I'm completely in love with the challenge and with the work. And, and I, I always wanted to write for musical theater, but I, I didn't know how the opportunity would come and now it's come. That's really incredible. And what, what range uh, you've had so far in your career and, and you're not done yet. Yeah, I mean, Amy, you know, she's, I don't know how, which solo album this is. She's made so many. She's got a country band now and she's been like touring. When Indigo Girls have been off this year, she's been touring with her country band. So she's, she's got her own following and she owns a record label and all that stuff. So we, each of us has our own creative endeavors that the other one supports wholeheartedly. Then we get back, cause we don't put all the eggs into the Indigo Girls basket. It keeps us interested. Uh, in being back together and working on Indigo Girls. So it's like a good, healthy marriage, really. That's really cool. We're talking to Emily Saliers, uh, half of the Indigo Girls. They'll be here on Friday, April 21st with the Jacksonville Symphony Orchestra in the Moran Theater at the Jacksonville Center for Performing Arts. It's a beautiful theater, by the way, Emily. Thank you so much for taking the time with me. It was great to catch up with you. It's good to see you and to hear your voice because I knew you more from your voice. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I really do have to say we love Jacksonville. Both Amy and I do. We're looking forward to coming back and we're really looking forward to playing with the symphony. So uh, thanks for helping to spread the word and thanks for talking with us. You bet. Give, give Amy my love and uh, we'll see you soon. Okay, for, take good care. Portfolio right. Weekly Magazine. I'm Rob Nicholson.